Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today we need to talk about some pretty huge Arizona County's news and trade rumors surrounding a potential Jacob Jigger in trade, Phil Kessel, potential relocation to Houston or Quebec City, and big arena troubles that are facing the Arizona Coyotes. Now it's not exactly like Arizona needed it, but over the past couple weeks they have been the king in terms of drama in the NHL and we've seen a ton about the Arizona situation really come to light over the last week or so. and it's also gotten worse as we've seen a lot of trade rumors around key players, especially Jacob Chikrin, who is back in trade talks, and we've seen a lot of trade rumors surrounding him. So what is the latest around the Arizona Coyotes? What could we see with Jacob Chikrin, Phil Kessel, and what will we see with Arizona going forward? Watch till the end for the complete recap and all the latest trade rumors, and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are new. 55% of the people that are watching are not subscribed. If you like hockey, this channel is the place to be. Now, if you guys remember, going back to my pretty sure September there was a trade rumor by the fourth period that said that the Coyotes were shopping Jacob Chikrin and I made a video about it and immediately Craig S. Morgan who is pretty plugged into the Coyotes had a tweet saying it wasn't true and that Jacob Chikrin was the cornerstone piece of this Coyotes team and there was no way that they were ever going to trade for him. And then today, out of nowhere, at 1 a.m., Elliot Freeman put out his recent 32 thoughts, and one of the first things he talked about was a potential Jacob Chickering trade. And I'm just saying, man, it's not the greatest timing for Arizona, especially considering how much they've gone through recently. But it feels like Jacob Chickering could actually be traded starting today. And Elliot Freeman, on one of his paragraphs on 32 Thoughts, said this about a potential Jacob Chickering trade. Arizona GM Bill Armstrong refused to comment when asked, but it now sounds like the Coyotes are gauging the market on Jacob Chikrin. I've heard the ask is massive, but that doesn't mean opponents are running away. He's signed for three more years at a very reasonable 4.6 million AAV and is a terrific player. That is one to watch. Now that is simply fascinating, and we're going to get into all the details of Jacob Chikrin, what teams could be involved here, but just that by itself, knowing that Arizona is potentially shopping him, having him in the market is pretty huge. I mean, going back to that trade rumor in September, there was just the rumor that he was available for a couple of firsts, I believe, and that was what the rumor was. It wasn't that he was going to get traded for that, but he was available, and that was struck him down, and now we get confirmation from Elliot Freeman that that might have been true all along, or at least now, they're willing to shop a number one D-man that can be an elite player for any NHL team. Now, what I find most interesting is that in the span of three months, basically, Basically, we've gone from Jacob Chikrin being an untouchable to him now being available on the market, and I'm really interested to see what changed in Arizona's philosophy. Again, going back to that September issue, Craig Morgan said this about Jacob Chikrin's availability. The tweet has now been deleted, I can confirm, I shouldn't have to, that Jacob Chikrin is not on the trade block. This should come as no surprise to anyone that's been following the Coyotes. They want to build around him. But then fast forward a couple of months and Craig also says this, 2021 Norris Trophy candidate Jacob Chikrin has no points and is an NHL worse minus 20. There is no narrative in which this is not a concern. Now since then, he has gotten some points and in 26 games so far this season, Jacob Chikrin has two goals, five assists for seven points. And even though he has been better over the last month, it's still been a pretty horrible situation in a year so far for Jacob Chikrin, especially considering how good and underrated he was last year. He came in 10th in Norris Trophy voting, but I honestly thought he should have been much higher. He was amazing last year, getting 41 points, 18 goals, 23 assists in 56 games played. He was simply electric, was easily Arizona's best player, and was among the best defensemen in the entire league and got some recognition for it. And at that point, he was 22 years old. Right now, he's 23. He has three more years left at $4.6 million. And if he's able to get back to that 2021 level, he would be a number one defenseman for a ton of teams out there. And at that cap hit, it would be an absolute bargain for him. And that's when we're, that's I think one of the most important parts is that cap pit still locked in pretty long term. It is a cap world and the cap really isn't going up too much over the next few years. Having Jacob Chikrin at that cap pit is a steal even if you might have to overpay picks wise on paper to get him on your team. 
Now, going back to that fourth period trade when we were a couple months back, the trade price involved for Jacob Chicken was two first round picks. And apparently, it wasn't true, but it seems like Jacob Chicken is on the market now and is available. So the trade price is certainly important when we're talking about this situation. And obviously, Arizona is in their, in their rebuild right now. Over the past year and a half, really, they've tried their hardest to get as many first and first round picks and overall picks as humanly possible. They are they are just stacked on the second round this next year, for instance. Instance. But this is an Arizona team that will want picks first and foremost. Not even just prospects, not players. They want picks the most they possibly can get. And that's why Arizona was asking for two first round picks. But I do believe they'd ask more on top of it. I, I do feel like now since we have confirmation that there is a potential train on the books here, that it is available, I feel like Arizona is going to want even more potentially, especially during the season, to make this trade happen. But I do feel like for NHL teams, two first round picks would be a deal that I would absolutely make. Make, especially if I'm in a playoff spot and don't really have much of a chance of falling outside of that picture over the next couple of years, Jacob Chikrin would immediately bolster that to any team in the NHL and would be a top two caliber type guy. To me, first two first round picks is a pretty big bargain, even if these next two NHL drafts are ridiculously good. Now, there are four teams that I think make the most sense when it comes to a Jacob Chikrin trade, teams that can trade two first round picks in 2022 and 2023 and still be pretty all right with it. And the first team I'm going to mention here is the Boston Bruins, a team that needs a lot more maturity and consistency on that defense than they have right now. Jacob Chikrin, I think, would definitely bolster that, and having McAvoy and Chikrin on the same defense would be absolutely amazing, and I feel like even if there is more of a price on top of the two first-round picks, I feel like Boston can accommodate that, and again, with their current situation where these next couple years are kind of their go-for years with this current group, I feel like this might be their last chance to truly add somebody great on that defense and truly make it a lot more competitive. Then going on to another team here that makes a ton of sense for Chikrin, the Colorado Avalanche. Chikrin is almost the exact type of, of defenseman the Avalanche are keeping uh, and, and, keep, and keep bringing on to the team. I mean, Devon Taves is a great example of a great skating defenseman who can also put in the work defensively and physically, and Jacob Chikrin is definitely that. And I feel like in Colorado, he would have the most success. And come playoff time, Chikrin would be one of the most one of the most valuable players, I think, on that Avs team. Then the next team I want to mention here is a team that might be the most risky in a Chikorin trade, but it would bolster their blue line a ton, and that's the Detroit Red Wings. Now, they're not a confirmed playoff team over these next couple of years, but they're in a situation where they, if they do add that defense, I think they'd be a lot stronger, and I feel like they'd be so much more interesting in the future. Obviously, Maurice Sider is the best defenseman on that Red Wings blue line by far, but adding Chikorin would give Maurice Sider some more stability long-term, which I think is needed, because we see with Chikorin in Arizona, how he has been carrying the low for so long and it kind of weighs him down eventually, that could maybe happen to Maurice Sider if some of the defensemen in the system don't come up as fast as predicted. I feel like Chikrin will be an amazing addition on that defense and one that is badly needed this season. Then going on to the next team I want to mention, the Edmonton Oilers. This is another team kind of like Boston that really wants that lower cap it and Chikrin does have that at 4.6 million, but this is a player that I think would be absolutely needed onto Edmonton, even if they might have to trade a couple of players to make the cap work. Ken Holland has already said how much he wants to improve and needs to improve that defense and Jacob Chikrin is the best option out there simply put. Now, to me, we've been talking about some players in Arizona being traded this year. Phil Kessel is a great example, and I definitely do expect him to be dealt this trade deadline for a pretty handsome sum, but... Phil Kessel makes sense. He's on an older deal. He would be a guy that would be a rental for a lot of teams, and it makes sense to get rid of Phil Kessel at this point. But Jacob Trickon is a little bit of a different story. He's still 23 years old, and although he hasn't had the greatest season, this would be the one player that, if I'm Arizona, I keep. And to me, it would be disastrous for their franchise if they were to let him go. They have some defensive prospects, but I really doubt they're going to get anybody that's up to the level of Chickren over the next couple of years. Really, these next couple of years are fantastic, but on defense, defense, they're not amazing. And I feel like for Arizona, you have your franchise defenseman already, which is so hard to get that you might as well keep him, especially if you can keep him long term. And Chikrin does seem kind of happy in Arizona, even though the season hasn't been as planned. So to me, I would keep him, but it does seem like Arizona's going for the full teardown and Chikrin might be a part of that. Now, a lot more Arizona news has happened than just the trade rumors, obviously. And in the last week, we've seen a ton of drama over the arena and potential relocation. Now, 
Now, this whole situation when Katie String, one of the best reporters out there in hockey, put out a, just a bombshell of a tweet and a bombshell of article saying the Coyotes may be locked at a Gill Arena River uh, by City of Glendale for unpaid arena charges and delinquent tax bills. And after the fall of that, we eventually got the Coyotes fessing up and eventually paying and getting their dues. But there's a lot more parts about this that are really interesting to me. One of the things that Katie String does say is that there is some discrepancies clearly existing between what Coyotes have recently paid and what other parties, City of Glendale ASM, still expect to be paid, namely rent for the 2021-2022 season. And that is interesting too, because it feels like, again, Arizona has paid all their stuff for this year, but next year is still kind of in doubt. And with the with the Gill Arena a River situation, with potentially a new arena in Tempe, it kind of leaves Coyotes, and the early Coyotes right now, in a situation where they might have to play elsewhere at some points in 2022 at the very least. And that provides an even bigger discrepancy in Arizona, Arizona situation, what we could potentially see. And during the NHL meetings we saw this last week, we saw Gary Bettman asked about this situation. He basically said that there is no relocation happening and the Arizona counties are not moving. Now, that's just Gary Bettman's lawyer talk speaking, and he kind of has to say that since he's back to Arizona so much over this time. It's not like he's going to say, oh, let's move into Quebec City now that they've had some issues. But I feel like for Arizona, Arizona, it's just one of those situations where, yes, a building in Tempe would definitely help, and I feel like that would be a much needed progression in the Arizona County system, but at the same time, I feel like it's putting a band-aid over a huge wound that Arizona's kind of been letting go over these past couple of decades. Now, a ton of people over the week were saying to move the Coyotes to Houston, move the Coyotes to Quebec City, and I gotta say, for Quebec City people, I'm, I'm sorry, it's probably not gonna happen. Houston makes a lot more sense, though, but it comes back to Arizona's arena situation. If they do get that new arena built in Tempe that they've been talking about for a while now, then everything is solved. I think the Coyotes would stay there for a long time. If they don't get that, though, and have to go to arena after arena, trying to put a bandit on the gaping wound, then I feel like Arizona is a lot more likely to actually be moved and for the NHL to pull the trigger on and pull the plug on that franchise. But let's be honest, if the Coyotes do move, it would be to Houston. With the amount of potential fans that could be made there, it's just a simple, easy answer. And the Stars would finally have a true rivalry within the state. It would be amazing, and I feel like Houston deserves a team whether it's the Cowdies or expansion franchise, make it happen already because Houston deserves it. But going back to Coyotes fans for a second here, you guys I feel the most bad for because not only do you guys have to suffer through this horrible franchise and still have to be fans for this franchise, which takes a lot of guts. You also had a ton of people saying you're terrible fans and there's no fans in Arizona and that the, that the team should be moved because there's no fans. But there are fans in Arizona that do love the Coyotes and want them to be successful. I mean, go back to, and watch the 2012 playoffs. That, that, a full, that whole arena was packed with Coyotes fans. And I feel like if this team was actually competent, we would be talking about the Coyotes as a much greater franchise. But it's just sad to see it all go this way. And I feel so bad for Coyotes fans out there. You guys deserve so much better than whatever this franchise has become. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of all this Coyotes news surrounding Jacob Chickering. Where do you think he'll go? What do you think the trade will look like? What do you think about Phil Kessel? What do you think about this arena situation in Arizona? Where do you think they should relocate if they do? Let me know all your thoughts. Make sure you comment all of them down below. Share this video with friends. Hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and click on this card for all my trade number content right on playlist. My name is Nathan. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.